I want to cut a straight line through the middle of this piece of wood. Now the only saw I have that will do that is my bandsaw. But there's nothing on this bandsaw that I can use as a good reference for the wood. Since the wood is not straight, I can't use a fence. So I'm going to build a sled that I can fix this wood onto and that way run it perfectly straight along the saw using the mitre slots in the table. So I found this piece of inch ply. It's probably a little longer than I plan to use but at least it will give me the options in the future to saw longer pieces of wood. I'm going to fix a small strip of wood on the underside of the sled that will run in the mitre slot and control its linear motion. But I also want to stop the sled from tipping either backwards or forwards as I run onto or off the table. So I'm going to uh, somehow hook over the edge of the table to stop that. Finally, the only other mo potential sort of freedom of movement that it will have is to tip this way. Uh, I'm hoping that since the work is going to be sitting pretty much central to the blade, that's not going to happen. We'll see. So it looks like I've just got just over 18 millimeter wide mitre slot, so I'll cut down a piece of wood to fit that on my table saw. So to begin with, I'm just going to clean an edge up by taking maybe half a millimetre off it, and then I'll set this to the 18 millimetres I need and run it through again. There we go, that looks good. Now I'm remembering to measure to the teeth and not to the carrier metal on the blade. And there we have it. It's still a little bit tight, as you can see, but I don't want to run it through the circular saw again because I'll probably take off more than I want to. So from now it's just going to be a job of fettling with a block and some sandpaper until it's just right. So here's the baton that's going to run along the mitre slot. I've chamfered the ends here as you can see, which means it will find the mitre slot easier as, I'm, as it enters. Uh, and I've stuck a bit of glue on the back and we're ready to go. I've clamped this steel rule, in fact it's an aluminium rule, I've, I've clamped this to the um, sled such that as I tack uh, this runner on I can keep it nice and straight because if I somehow waver then it's not going to run through the mud slot. And before that glue dries, I'm going to give it a dry run uh, on the table just to make sure it does slide. So here it is. And as I'll show you, it runs on quite easily, but gets tight very quickly. It will run through, but I don't want to be pushing it that hard when I'm cutting wood. 
So what I'm going to do is using some sandpaper, sit it up against there, introduce a block, and then just run it up and down. Now this way, it's only sanding the runner and it's not going to be eating away at the plywood. So I sanded and I sanded and I sanded and it didn't really feel like it was helping. Uh, so I resorted to a little bit of silicone oil and voila, it slides nice and easily. So that's a lesson to learn. Sometimes friction can make things feel like they're not fitting, but it's just because you've got uh, probably a little bit of um, wood glue sort of gone sticky on the wood and it was just binding. So the silicone oil sorted that out a treat. So I want something to grab the table like this. And my plan is, if this was my sled, I'll have a piece of wood attached to it, and then a second piece of wood to hook up underneath the table. Like that. So exactly the same as last time, I'm going to clean up one edge uh, by just taking a slither off, and then I'll set this to the 35 millimeters that I need and run it through a second time. I've just cut my piece of wood and as a sanity check before I glue anything I've clamped a couple of bits of ply either side of it to see whether it's the right thickness. Perfect. So this piece I'm going to glue and screw. So I've screwed the two ends and now it's just time to do the middle. So here's the piece that's going to sit and ride underneath the edge of the table. And I've chamfered here and here such that when you lead or when you uh, come onto the table uh, it will just engage a bit more easily. So with a bit of luck, I should be able to to figure out how I'm going to fix my nice bit of wood to it. So I've made a couple of these. They're essentially an L-shaped bracket with a load of holes in the end. My thinking being that I can get some relatively short screws through here and into the work that I'm trying to uh, rip through and that will hold it onto the bracket and then I can hold the bracket onto the sled with a quick clamp. Uh, not sure if it's going to work but we'll give it a go. What I'm doing here is marking out every centimetre on the board away from the blade and I'm going to draw some horizontal lines along each of those and it's going to help me in, when I come to cutting the wood help me move the wood a given distance into the towards the blade um, to get straight cuts because if I end up moving one end of the wood too far in then I'll end up with a, a 
a wedge effectively, which I don't want. And I'll show you how this works in a minute. So I've got my lines marked out on the sleds. My piece of wood has screwed onto these, uh, these brackets. Now, the next challenge is to make sure that I get the wood parallel to uh, the direction of motion, i.e. parallel to the mitre slot. Uh, now, what I've done is I've popped a couple of bolts through here and they, they are wedged quite tightly into the bottom here so they don't spin. Wood goes in here. This goes there. So the plan here is, I can get the centre of the wood aligned with, say, my 60 millimetre mark here, at this end. Do the same at this end. There we go. 1660. And now with this, I can... I mean, that 60 could have been anything, but the main point is that this end uh, and this end are both along a straight line. And then I can align it here. That's on 290, so if I put it on 290 here as well, and tighten it up, I now know that as long as this point and this point are on the same measuring mark, that my wood is correctly oriented. So it should theoretically that just be a case of clamping these down with my quick clamps, like that, and the same here, and cutting it. So let's see if it works. I've got way too much friction in this sliding table to have any idea how much I'm loading the blade. I've added a bit of silicone oil to all of the uh, mating surfaces on the underside of this sled and on the top of the table, so let's give it another go. I think for starters my blade is far too fine for this sort of work so I suppose the next step would be to get a blade that's actually right for the job. This here is the blade I originally tried and as you saw it was terrible, it didn't want to work with the green wood at all. So I bought this from Tussles, it's a sabre cut, it's three teeth per inch. Um, as compared to this, which is actually a, a six uh, TPI blade, and it has made an incredible dif uh, difference. I'm really, really pleased with this. As you can see here, I've made a small modification in that I've got this piece of wood on the end that screws into the end grain of the work as well as the screws that go through this plate here 
and my hope is that it's going to make it a bit more rigid and robust when it's running through the saw. What I want to get out of this piece of wood is probably one nice piece and maybe an inch and a half, two inches uh, down the centre. So I'll be moving from that centre line back just under an inch or so, 20 to 30 millimetres. Okay, so I've got this where I want it. I'll just clamp it down. And cut it. Well that blade certainly makes a huge difference. It's working, but it really, really needs some improvement on how easily it slides. I think that the only way to do that, whilst it's a functioning solution, I wouldn't want to use it too many times. I'll show you in a minute the, the resultant cut I have. Um, I definitely think I need some sort of bearing, um, ball bearing, bearing racer system. Um, that'll be for the Mark II, I think. This is the result, and I'm relatively pleased with it. It wasn't fun to cut, but this will sand up to make something quite nice. It's, it's still relatively green now, so I'm going to let it dry for a few months indoors. I've no idea how it's going to crack or warp, but time will tell with that. I don't even know what the wood is. I picked it up to burn in my wood burner, but looking at the lovely colour patterns in it, um, I'm really interested to see how it does dry or season um, and what I can do with it once it has done. So whilst I'm not overly impressed with uh, using this sled uh, due to the binding and the stiction aspects, it is quite functional, it does its job. Uh, as expected or as I would hope, so I'm quite pleased with it in that respect. Hopefully in the future I'll have a go at making a better sled using bearings, maybe even some sort of extruded uh, aluminium uh, runner. But thank you ever so much for watching the video. If you like it, like it or comment or if you've got any questions, you know, pop them down below. And I'll see you soon.